I fell a long time ago. This is Digital Charcuterie, and this is the road to Ahsoka coming this August. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. If you're new to this channel, thanks for stopping by. Please give us a subscribe. And if you like this video, force push that like button. Let's get right to it now. The Ahsoka show is going to introduce us to our first ever live action Dark Jedi. Characters I am excited to meet. They aren't Sith. They don't have all the qualities of, the, of a Sith. They're not as fearless as a Sith. In fact, they have fear. They are fearful, possibly even able to be redeemed. But Anakin was redeemed. Whatever. Look, he was the hero of our story. Dark Jedi, intriguing, cannot wait. One of these Jedi that we're going to meet, Shin Hati. Here's this is from Wikipedia. Shin Hati uh, was a female individual active during the New Republic and the Sokotano search for Ezra. She wielded a lightsaber with an orange red blade. I'm very excited about this blade, by the way. She was Balin Skull's apprentice. All right, Balin Skull. We don't know much about Balin Skull. I'm going to do another video on him. In the coming weeks, months, future, whatever. But let's talk about Shin Hati for now. There's a lot of speculation as to what this could mean. Why someone so young could be this. And if you look closely at Shin Hati, she sports a Padawan braid. Leaving you to believe that either her Jedi Master was killed, murdered in Order 66. Or she is the apprentice, the actual like Padawan of Balin. Who was a light Jedi who was training her in the light. And then they both went to the dark. Which is probably more accurate at some point. I don't think... I, just because the way Inquisitors work, I wouldn't see her losing her master to the dark side, uh, to death. I would see her more being the apprentice of someone who fell to the dark side, which means that both of them would have to agree to obviously be the dark Jedi. But this raised some more questions. She's obviously blonde, and in Star Wars, there's only Luke Skywalker is allowed to be blonde. These are the rules. I don't make them up. I'm just joking. We know that Heir to the Empire is being touched upon by Dave Filoni, Timothy Zahn's great novel. The Thrawn trilogy from the 90s as a whole is being touched upon. We would, You'd have to guess. It seems like what is Legends is slowly trickling in. Like, they're cherry-picking the Legends aspects that, that worked very well. And you're going to feed them into at least the Mandoverse stuff, right? And I, I actually do think that the Daisy Ridley movie coming out will also have some trickle effect with the Legends as well. But for now, we'll talk about the Mandoverse. And if this is the case, if you look at Shin Hati, she could potentially be a clone of Luke Skywalker. We know in an original draft for The Force Awakens that it started off with Luke's hand and lightsaber floating through space, which is how they clone Luke, Luke in the Thrawn books. So if this is the case, you take, you cherry pick that, you can still have Luke's hand play a factor. We're early enough in, we're not even as far into the future as we are with Force Awakens. We're much earlier. You take that aspect of it and you can have Balin who might, in the comics is a clone himself who does it, but it could be Balin and Balin could use this as a way to clone an apprentice for himself, seeing a way for him to maybe revive the Sith to perhaps take over the galaxy. We don't quite know what his plan is, you know, because there's speculation he's working with Thrawn, but he could be working against Thrawn. He could be going against Thrawn. He could trick Thrawn into, into this. So he could obviously use cloning knowledge to clone his, his very own. Now, if that's the case, could she be force sensitive? It's looking like she is in the trailers. If she's a dark Jedi, one would have to assume, which you should never do, that she is force sensitive so it might not add up in that respect because of how difficult it has been to clone the force specifically with she vp bob gideon was somehow able to do it but they weren't completed yet so we don't know where they are in that technology in this show however that being said there might be some dark dark corners of the galaxy who are able to do this that balin might be aware of balin might be a product of this himself but cloning luke skywalker if we got a female version of luke skywalker in this galaxy someone with that much power and potential that could be very intriguing and a really fun storyline to go down it would also continue on with obviously heir to the empire the question is how do they wrap this up in do you wrap it up in the mandoverse movie which feloni said would not be like a series finale it would be like its own thing and the shows could continue on after or do you have this character play out until even just before the sequel trilogy or is she around later than that this is a way for them to reintroduce luke skywalker into this universe so that fans would have something else to complain about the question begs Mary Jade. Mary Jade plays a big factor in these books, and, I, and George Lucas always said that he could not stand Mary Jade, that he never liked Mary Jade. So I'm curious if they will recreate a character like that or go forth with their own iteration of a Mary Jade type, staying far away from that name but making a character somewhat similar. We're going to have to wait and see. Ahsoka comes out in August. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And until next time, I have spoken.